minute warning system. Oh, that's fine, that's fine. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm really pleased to be here. And uh, it's a challenge for me because after lunch, giving a presentation and keep you alive is always a problem. But I hope in 15 minutes that it can get across what we are doing in the Netherlands and particularly in the uh, Amsterdam metropolitan area. Let me start to tell uh, what I'm going to talk about. And that's the title of my presentation. The transition towards a circular economy that's a multi-actor and multi-level challenge. Why do I say that? Well, because to uh, make the transition requires, in fact, the involvement and the actions of all levels. <coughs> local, regional, national, European and global strategies. And it also involves multi-actor involvement. So this is really something new. It's actually system action and transition management. That it is all about. Well, in uh, the Netherlands, uh, the Council for the Environment and Infrastructure uh, has uh, uh, issued a report called the Circular Economy from Wish to Practice. And in that report, uh, of which I was one of the, the committee members to draft the report. In that report, we uh, very much uh, stressed the question, okay, when it's a multi-actor, multi-level problem, who is going to do what and at which level? That was the content of the report. It was issued in 2015, and in fact, the main uh, uh, outcomes are quite easy to tell in 15 minutes. But if you ask me more, I can dwell upon it for two hours, three hours, whatever you wish. But the main uh, points we stressed are uh, the points, what do uh, the uh, state actors have to do? And what do we have to do at the local level to implement all the policies and strategies drafted by uh, the national state? So I will first focus on what are the main um, uh, recommendations for the national uh, policies. Well, the main message is follow a systematic policy approach at national level. And uh, this, this policy approach should contain the following elements. Draw it a transition agenda and make circular economy one of the essential pillars of government policy. Develop a joint vision and incorporate this in the annual national budget memorandum. Formulate overarching objectives based on uh, the joint vision. Develop an approach for each ministry and of course tune then all the approaches to each other <coughs> and study the social effects of the disappearance of companies and take action to compensate for this uh, process if possible. Actually the main uh, points we uh, advised have been adopted by the national government in uh, 2016, one year later, uh, and they are now uh, working on a resource program which is uh, government-wide and all ministries that are relevant are involved. So that is what we have achieved at national level. Then the big thing is, of course, nice policies, but how are we going to put all these nice policies in practice? Well, and uh, what we advised as a council is that the implementation of the circular economy needs the appropriate scale. And for each case, you have to be aware what is the uh, most appropriate level in order to get a uh, sound business case. Is it a municipal level or is it a regional level? And how can all these levels work together in order to make the, the transition? In order to be concrete about what that means in practice, 
I will uh, share with you the main experiences I gained the last years in the um, Amsterdam metropolitan uh, area. Uh, I am a kind of orchestrator of the process of implementing um, circular economy in the whole area. That I do in behalf of the Amsterdam Economic Board, of which I am a member. We focus uh, on initiatives that have uh, certain elements that need to be taken into account. We only uh, take action that uh, requires the uh, scale of the region or the sub-region, which in fact needs the cooperation between uh, various municipalities and various companies. And we stress that all our actions uh, need to be relevant for multi-stakeholder approaches. So companies, regional uh, governments, knowledge institutes and citizens. We uh, are a region of about 2.3 million inhabitants, so it is a scale that really is interesting to make uh, a change which is substantial. In order to carry out my work, I use the ladder of circularity. That means that we give priority to options that are as high as possible on the ladder. We call it the 10 R's. It starts with the highest uh, level, refuse, then reduce, well that's very clear, then redesign, renew the product in view of circularity. Then reuse, repair, refurbish, remanufacture and repurpose, all possibilities for product reuse. And then we go to recycle and stress high value recycling. And if that is not possible anymore, the rest of the residuals, well, they need to be recovered by incineration and waste and, and energy recovery. That is the focus of our work. So first refuse and reduce, and then a lot of things that relate to product reuse. And today we also heard a couple of examples uh, of that, the rediscovery community, the uh, reuse network and the sharing uh, initiative. Actually, they are all part of this product reuse movement. When we uh, focus on product reuse, I give a couple of examples because there are many more products that can be reintroduced in the, in the economy uh, and that often happens at a local municipal scale. That means that we have to uh, mobilize municipalities to support these initiatives. And what we do as a region, we say we can also stimulate these kind of uh, initiatives by introducing circular procurement. And I uh, actually now chair a community of practice for the key players that have to implement circular procurement in their own municipality in order to make sure that this process gets off the ground. You can think of repair, of repurpose uh, products. So you, repurpose means that you make, for, for instance, from wood a nice fur uh, furniture like this one redesign and reuse, combinations of that, it's all possible. And often it also needs new business models. We heard that today already a couple of times. Sharing and leasing redefines product ownership. So many of the examples of the uh, product reuse activities relate to these new business models. For instance, Schiphol, the airport, they uh, asked the uh, company Philips, not to sell them the uh, LED lamps, but to sell lumen, which means they lease the uh, uh, LED lamps according to the number of lumens. That's a new business model. Similarly, we have a lot of examples of, for instance, apps like Peerbuy, where you, you uh, share or you lease 
uh, an um, equipment for uh, refurbishing <coughs> your house or whatever, uh, and you use it and you bring it back and you pay. Flow 2 uh, is the, a similar app, but then for professionals. And we also have initiatives like Mud Jeans, where you don't uh, buy your jeans, but you uh, lease jeans. Well, uh, there are in the, uh, the Amsterdam region many examples of this kind of initiatives. And we really like to push that. It's bottom up, but it shows that there is another type of economy in the making. If it's not possible anymore to reuse the product, we focus on recycling. And of course there are many, well, what we call resource streams circulating in our region, but uh, we focus first on nine waste streams, or residual streams, that are uh, really key for uh, the change towards a circular economy. So, uh, you can see them here, biomass, construction and demolition waste, electronic and electric waste, non-wearable textiles, uh, plastic, incontinence materials and diapers, mattresses, service of ICT sector and metals. And uh, the aim is in three year time to have uh, all these nine uh, uh, residual streams back into the cycle, high value. These streams are partly recycled now, but low, uh, uh, with a low value and low impact. And what we do is we really push as much as we ca can to come up with proposals in which companies can invest in these uh, new developments. They ask, the companies ask me, to prepare for a business case, which means that we need the scale, the volume, and the quality of uh, the recycled product. We uh, do as much as we can to prepare for a business uh, case, and at the moment that the uh, company or more companies are interested, we uh, ask them uh, to uh, submit a proposal of putting up a plant, and then uh, one of them can go ahead with it. That's the way we work. Um, to give you uh, just three examples of uh, business cases, the first case is circular uh, demolition and construction. Um, this is really a good business case. Um, of course, it, it, uh, it requires an other way of working as a consortium, because here, a housing corporation, a demolition company, the municipality of Amsterdam, and the recycler work together in a, a, a joint business model in order to make sure that 95% of the resources will be reused in the renovation, the, the whole uh, area is climate neutral and green. It's a fantastic example and it is a, a positive business case. So uh, that is the example, and I have more of them, that really shows that it can work. Second example, high value recycling of biomass. There are of course different uh, biomass streams household uh, waste, biodegradables, uh, sewage, sludge, uh, agro-food, pl uh, public greenery and water plants. And for each of these streams, we uh, also mobilize and prepare for business cases. For example, the business case of uh, public greenery at uh, uh, regionals, uh, that's an, an activity that needs to be carried out at regional scale while the previous example can very well be carried out at, yes, I'm almost there, yep. <laughs> uh, at uh, local scale. The regional scale needs uh, the cooperation of various municipalities that need to collect and pool their uh, <coughs> public greenery, and with that uh, material we make paper, and uh, in the future hopefully also uh, chemical compounds. The last example, that is an example we couldn't solve at uh, the regional level because that were, uh, the, uh, the closing, there was the closing of the loop of mattresses. 
Uh, here we don't have a good infrastructure yet, not uh, a system uh, to make uh, an, a viable business case. And we are working now with the whole chain at national level to make sure that together we reorganize the whole mattresses collection re and recycling and design of the uh, mattresses. And uh, uh, big companies like I IKEA is involved in this process in order to make the change. Last slide. What do we learn from this approach that I followed? Well, um, in the first place, there must be a proper balance uh, between closing the loops at local and at higher levels. Secondly, we need to attune the degrees of incineration in the coming uh, decade to the development of circular activities. So we have to work with the waste uh, management, uh, waste, um, uh, uh, waste management uh, corporations in order to make sure that in the end they are able uh, to move away from incineration to uh, circularity. Second important point is take care of sufficient supply of waste streams to be recycled. We need a certain scale and volume and a clear demand for the recycled uh, material. And we try to combine that with circular procurement in order to make sure that that can happen. Then we need, that has been stressed today a couple of times, secure the quality of the product reuse and uh, recycling. And we have to take away legal and technical barriers together with the national government. Then the whole press process uh, can't get off the ground if uh, it is not orchestrated and communicated in the region. And finally, we need to develop new financial and organizational arrangements <coughs> to get all these activities that uh, I uh, provided today uh, off the ground. It's not going to work when one company is just focusing on their own uh, activities and not working together. And similarly, one uh, municipality often can, can't do the job alone as well. Thank you. Thank you very much.